Hello, and welcome to today's vlog. Here today we're going to look at a killer Sudoku. Uh, it's the deadly killer Sudoku that appears in the Saturday Times. Um, it's normally the hardest of the week. Um, I think this one's flagged as being a 55 minute puzzle. Um, I'd say an expert's time for this sort of level of puzzle should be 10 to 15 minutes. Anything under 10 minutes, very, very quick. Um, uh, best in the world would probably be seven or eight minutes. Um, so that's that's what you need to aim for if you want to if you want to be the very best. Um, Fifty-five minutes? No, that that's that's too long. If you're taking more than fifty-five minutes on these puzzles, um, you probably don't know some of the techniques that are necessary to solve them, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so right, let's let's get started. Um, I'm fairly new with the software on the um, on this, so I'm going to pause occasionally and just fill bits in um, and explain what I'm doing. And the first thing to do when you start these puzzles is to identify uh, boxes of two and three and possibly four cells, which can only be um, a limited number of things. And there are some numbers that you you just need to get familiar with. So if you see 24 in a box of size 3, you know that that's a 789 box um, and you should be labeling that as such. So just scanning this grid very quickly, I can see uh, the 3 box in, in the bottom right hand corner. That's obviously can only be 1 and 2. The 24 box, there's a 10 box in there as well, which is a 10 box made up of 4 cells that can only be one two three and four um, and you need to be um, uh, having some form of notation to uh, allow you to record that these cells have a very limited number of possibilities so i'm going to try and use the software here to do that so i'm just going to pause briefly while i show that on the screen Okay, so hopefully you can see what I've done there. Hopefully that's clear on the screen. Um, the next place we need to look, and this is probably the biggest hint you can give when completing uh, Killer Sudokus, um, is the importance. So, so first you have to note the importance of the number 45. Why is 45 important? Well, it's because that is what the numbers 1 to 9 sum to. So you can immediately say that every row and column in this puzzle sum to 45 because we know that they must contain one of each of the numbers. So let's take a look at the top row for example and you should be able to see that we can actually fill in, I'm going to put the cursor over it, um, this cell uh, straight away and the reason we can fill that in is that we know that the, the boxes that appear, this 21 box, this 11 box, and this 22 box, they sum to 33, 34, uh, 54, um, and we know that the top line sums to 45, and only this cell is sticking out. So we know this is a 9. Oh, uh, I'm going to type that in as a big number, a 9. There we go. And you can see, actually, that you can do exactly the same thing on the bottom row. So in the bottom row we have a 3, a 24, so that's 27, and then a 20, so that's 5, uh, 47. Um, so again we know that this must be a 2 in order to allow that bottom row to sum to 45. That allows us to eliminate the 2 here, so for good order I shall do that. Um, but I doubt that's important. And we can actually extend that logic now because we can look at this, um, the penultimate row at the bottom of the grid here. Now that we have this 2, we can see we have a 16, a 21, that's 37, plus the 2 is 39. So we know that this is a 6. Um, and that is where we'll pause and I'll take a quick look to get the next step. Okay, uh, this is this is nice actually because we can we can we can learn one of the 
um, the other techniques that are important for solving these hard killer Sudokus here. So we, we said that the number 45 was important because each row and column must sum to 45. But we also know that that is true for each 3x3 three three large box. They must also sum to 45. And so by scanning the grid, you can try and identify boxes that when collected together have only a very limited number of um, external cells. And the two boxes that I'm looking at here are this box and this box. And you should be able to see that the only cell, only this cell here, at the top of the 17 box, um, is not completely contained within the boxes or the smaller boxes already included within these two uh, three by three boxes. Why does that matter? You may say. Well, we, we know that these two three by three boxes must sum to 90, and we also know that all of the cells in these two 3x3 three three boxes, except this one, must sum to 21 plus 17 plus 13 plus 15 plus 21. Now, those, those numbers there, I think, sum to 87. So we know that this must be a 3 in order to allow both of these 3x3 three three boxes to sum to 90. This is also quite helpful, actually, in terms of, let's look at this 17 box now. Um, we already have a 3 and a 6 here, so we know, we know that these two numbers have to sum um, to 8. But we know that we can't make 8 in two boxes with a 3 and a 5, because we already have a 3 in this box. We know we can't make it with a 2 and a 6, because we already have a 6 in the box. So the only way of making 8 using these two cells without breaching the conditions of the puzzle is with a 1 and a 7. And that's important, we need to note that. And you can see now that actually it was also important that I eliminated the 2 <laughs> in this box, because I can now eliminate the 1 as well, because there can't be a 1, because we know that the 1 is appearing here. So it can't be here. We know that the 1 can't be here. So in fact we now know that the 1 in this 10 box is appearing in either this cell or this cell. And that's something we should try and make note of in our minds as we go on. Okay, now let's look, use what we've already learned about this bottom left box to see if we can um, uh, extract some more numbers for it. So we know that this 20 box, we already have a 2 in it, so we know that the bottom row sums to 18. These three boxes here sum to 18. But we only have um, a few numbers that are left as, as possibilities to be included in here, because we already have in the box identified a 1, a 2, a 6 and a 7. So in particular we, we have not identified yet where the 5, 8 and the 9 could possibly go in this box. We know this box might contain a 3 and a 4, but we know that there's a 5, 8 and 9 that still need to be placed. Well, 5, 8 and 9, uh, you'll all quickly realise, do not add sum to 18. And that means that this box here must contain either a 5, an 8 or a 9. And that means that this bottom row here must contain exactly two of the digits of 5, 8 and 9. We don't know which ones yet, but that is actually incredibly useful because we can quickly work out that actually we're now, we're, we know for certain what these three numbers are. We might not know the order of them, but we know for certain what they are because if this was a 5 and this was an 8, and this would also have to be a 5, so that's impossible. If this was a 9 and this was an 8, this would have to be a 1. Well, that's impossible too, because we already have the 1 here. So we know with certainty that in some order, 
uh, in notes at the moment, yes. Um, this must be a 5, a 9, and a 4. This must be the same, and this must be the same. And that's very helpful, because now we know that in fact this box must contain a 3, because it cannot contain a 4, because we know the 4 is in the bottom line. So let's make that 3. And that means that must be an 8. That cannot be a 3. Let's get rid of it. And there we are. So we now we, we now have only a small set of possibilities for this too. So let's let's fill in what this is going to be. So that's 3, 6, 7, 8, isn't it? Seven here because this we've identified as one and seven. So the seven here, in fact, must be is fixed now, and we know that the eight and the nine are fixed. And okay, so that's also helpful because we know that this is a two cell eleven. So there are four ways you can make eleven in two cells. You can have a five and a six, you can have a four and a seven, a three and an eight, or a two and a nine. But we've already eliminated three of those possibilities because we already have a seven, eight, and nine in this row. So we know, oh sugar, excuse my French, um, this is a five, six combination. This is a five, six combination. Um, which means this is a two, four combination. There we go. And we can in fact now go a step further Because we can look, we should be looking now at the bottom right box. And it's quite an interesting box because the, we, we've already got an 8 and a 9 fixed here in some order. And we have a 1 and a 2 fixed here in some order. So we know that these four cells sum to 20. 8 plus 9 plus 1 plus 2. We know these three cells sum to 16. So that's 36 already taken care of in this box, which means these two cells must sum to 9 because of our 45 rule. Well, if this is a 5, this has to be a 4, and we can see that cannot be a 4. So this must, in fact, now be a 6, and that must be a 3, which means this must be a 5, and this cannot be 3, 3, 3. And that allows us to limit these, so I'll just do that. Okay, and now we can look at um, one of the, I suppose, the most advanced techniques you tend to see in these puzzles. Um, so let's look at the last four columns. Columns coming down here, 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 and here. Um, we know from our 45 rule that these four columns must sum to 180, which is a big number. <laughs> but we, we can also see that we already have boxes in these four columns that cover all the squares except these two. So we're going to be able to know exactly what these two squares, this square and this square, sum to. This is where it's very easy to make mistakes in these puzzles because you're adding up a lot of numbers here. Um, I've just done that quickly and I get 172 as the sum of all of the numbers except these two. So we know these two have to sum to 8 and you can see that there's, there's no way of doing that unless this is a 1 and this is a 7. So it looks good. And let's uh, get, we, so that means we can delete some things here, which I'll just do quickly. Um, there we are. Another thing to note, which is important in these puzzles, is to make the numbers work hard for you. Uh, you remember earlier I mentioned that the one in this central box is is fixed in either of these two positions. Well, we have the one in the bottom center box fixed as well. 
So we can look up at the top box. We can see that because this is an 11 in 2, this cannot be the 1 here. So the 1 must either be here or here. And we should note that because that sort of thing is important or could be important in certain puzzles. Okay, and then it's at places like this that you really have to start working uh, and thinking quite hard about the possibilities um, uh, for, for, for cells where there are only a limited number of possibilities. So the, I'll tell you the place I'm looking at here, and it's at this 8 in this box. Um, and the reason I'm looking at that is that 8 in 2 cells can only be made up in three different ways, either 3, 5, 2, 6, or 1, 7. And one of those ways is eliminated here by this 7. So we know this is either 3, 5, or 2, 6. Now, actually, with a little bit of thought, I think we can go further than that. Um, if, if this was 3, 5, just let's imagine it was 3, 5, then we can, and I'm actually going to put it in so that you can see. You can see this would have to be the 3 because of this 3 here. And you can see this would have to be the 5. Now, if this was the case, we can look up at this cell here, this um, uh, this this eight in three. Now, eight in three is a very limited uh, has a very limited possibility set as well. It can either be one two five or it's one three four. Okay. Now, if if this is a 3, we know this cannot be a 3 because of this 3 here. So in fact, this, this 8 could only be 1, 2, 5. Okay? And we know there's a 5 here, so in fact this would have to be the 5. Now, if all those things are true, the puzzle breaks because this cell would have to be a 1 or a 2 and this cell would have to be a 1 or a 2. Now let's take a look at column 8. We've now got three cells which have only two possibilities. They can only be a 1 or a 2. Now that's clearly impossible. So all of this was a long-winded way of saying that this 8 here cannot in fact be 3, 5 and must be 2, 6. So, and we'll see but that quickly basically um, solves the puzzle actually. An awful lot will fall from this because this 2, 6 forces this to be a 2 and this to be a 1. And we already said that we knew that an 8, an 8, an eight in 3 cells must always contain a 1. That's a very important principle to remember. Um, and here Neither of these cells can be a 1 because of this one. So this is a 1. We now know that that's a 1 after all our effort. Um, we know that this can't be 2, 5 because of the 2's here. This, so this is 3, 4. And this is 3, 4. That can't be a 4. Um, and this 9 in 3. We know it doesn't contain a 2. If it doesn't contain a 2, it can't be 2, 3, 4. And if it can't be 2, 3, 4, it must contain a 1. So we know there's a 1 here, or a 1 here. And that means that the other two cells that aren't the 1 must, must add up to 8. Well, they can't be 1, 7 because of the 7 here. They can't be 2, 6 because of the 2 here. So they must be 3, 5. So we can fill those three in like that, which forces this to now be a 4. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll, I'll speed solve the rest of it um, and you'll see that on the screen. But um, I mean, I, I guarantee to you that the puzzle, for, the puzzle has no more uh, you know, difficult steps from now on. All of the trickiness, if you like, has been taken out by, by, the, um, by the steps that we've already we've already made and solved. Um, 
So I hope that's helpful. I uh, will probably do this again and we'll certainly do it for other types of puzzles. Um, so we'll, we'll do some Japanese pencil puzzles over the coming weeks as well. Um, thanks for watching.